Howdy, Howdy Ramblers. Ramblers! So today is Free Bear Friday. And we're going to talk about mashing the grain. And uh, right now we just need to heat the water up. So we use this uh, device. It's homemade. Um, you know, safety first. This is what allows us to uh, brew on the stove top. It takes a lot of power to boil that much. Um, so our stove doesn't quite have enough power. And we'll talk more about a heat stick on another video. But we just plug that right in. Crank up the stove, and now this water is going to take maybe 20 minutes to up. Yeah. get up to temperature. We can uh, set a timer and walk away for a little bit and enjoy a beer. Great. And someone's going to have to go get grain from the car. Oh, yeah, that's not it. <laughs> and to make sure we have the right temperature, we use, I think it's a dairy thermometer. You just put it right in, it floats, and it lets you know when you get to the point you want it to. <clears throat> 150. Yeah. Okay, almost 170. 170 something. Oh, shh. Sorry. I got too caught up in you filming. Kill them both. Sorry. Well, that's all documented. It was my mistake. My bad. It's a lot better to go up and get right under your temperature and get it right than to have to spin it off. Another key tool we use is this chair. And we got our Gatorade water style bucket from Home Depot. Straining tube. Strainer. Mesh strainer. Is that your ringtone? I don't know. It's never rang before. That's funny. Um, hi! All right, there we go. How much are we gonna transfer? We need to leave <clears throat> one point five behind. Okay. You also want to make sure you keep it a little stirred up to get your, you know, keep salts in suspension. We leave a little bit of this behind in uh, in the main kettle for kind of a mash out or the end of the the first rinse and. Uh, uh, that works out for us. Then we're going to add the grain. This is my favorite part of the entire process because it smells so good. We got to be careful not to rough up the the mesh down in there and then I also want to add this so that you know, oh, see I'm doing that too fast. I think it's my arm to stabilize up and down the column, get it all loosed up and mixed. So this is a little warmer than we wanted it, and but usually we like to have a little extra time for stirring just to make sure it gets mixed up real good. We might have gotten a little too much water in or just gotten the numbers wrong slightly, um, but we're not off by a lot. As far as how we get the numbers, because we started at 174, we want this to be about 153, how do we know that? Um, beer tools. Right, so our <laughs> yeah, we use a system. software helps us calculate that. So one of the first things we did was calibrate, and that kind of ballparks you as to like how much heat you're getting out of the stove, out of the heat stick, how much the pots retain over yes. time, how much this retains over time. All right, so we set one timer for one hour, and one timer for 45 minutes. 48 minutes. 48 minutes. 48 minutes is when you turn this back on to uh, heat it up so that you can move on to the next step. And then I turn the other one on the small pot, just turn it on to six on the stove. Yep. So a lot of your method is just finding out, you know, what you need to hit to make it repeatable and predictable. And now we wait for practically an hour. We can do whatever we want. Yay! We can watch a movie. Really? No, we're going to organize the kitchen, but sometimes we do fun stuff. So I have to test the liquid in here to make sure that it's mashed long enough. So I'm just going to put a little teeny bit of liquid in here. It would be hard to do because it's so dark. But then we use a little bit of iodine. You can just get this at any pharmacy. Pure iodine. And we drop it in and to see if it changes color. Oh, that turned, yeah, that's not ready. That looks like it's not ready because it turned purple and then it turned to black. 
Yeah. If it was ready, it wouldn't change color. It would just linger. Your phone's ringing. Okay, now we're on the first drain. We've got uh, Amber uh, did the iodine test, which tells us whether or not all the sugars have been converted from the starches. Right. And if it changes, you've got starch left, and if it don't, you're ready to go. And then she poured in the rest of the hot water, which is a mash out, and did a quick recirculation. Yep. Uh, we'll talk a lot more about recirculation and pouring in the next episode, which will be about sparge. Ah, sparge. Which is the rinsing process. Technically, this is still... Um, we use some of the sparge techniques, but this is still technically the end of our mash. Our mash out's added. It's the first drain. We're not rinsing with clean water yet. This is very uh, warm and sweet. It looks delicious. There's a lot more work to do before we get to the boil. Uh, but this is really the end of the mash for now. Well, we had a lot of fun teaching you about the mash. And until next time with the sparge, ramble on. Ramble on. Cheers.